everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, today I am going to do another piece from the water series. I'm gonna do a flower. And we will see if I can do this fast enough to do a step-by-step -step for you. Some parts may have to be sped up because I'm a perfectionist and, you know, but <laughs> I, will, I will try to help walk you through this. The colors that I'm using today for my blue color is actually a mix of phthalo blue and phthalo green by Golden. And I have Liquitex Basics in titanium white for my background. This is a 16 by 20 canvas. The consistency of my paint, it's pretty thin, but not very thin. It does make a bit of a mound. Ooh, that was a hunk of something. It does make a bit of a mound and then it disappears. All right, let's lay down a base coat. All right, my base coat is down and what I have done, you can see, I have three shades of blue here. This is just the blue and green mix, but I put it in a separate cup so I do not contaminate that with white. I've taken that color and added a bit of white to it. And then again, with even more white, creating some tones. And what we're gonna do is sketch this out first. All right, so first let's establish our base. So we're just gonna put a little oval, not all the way at the bottom. You wanna leave a little room for foreground. Now we're gonna sketch a V. Now turn it into a D. Now you wanna start up here, just above the splash on the left and draw a shallow S. And by shallow, I mean not big curves, just a light curve. Could have done better than that. I'll make a better S. All right, I like that better. And it is okay if you mess it up because you will be coming in and smearing a lot of this up anyway but this is just to give you your shape. So an S here, see that S. And then there'll be a line coming from the top. There we go, that's the shape I want. And if it helps, you can take that S and just draw a line through it. If it helps you to see it the way it needs to be seen. I just wanna make this a little fatter down here. Okay. 
Okay. Just thicken that up a little bit. I keep a paper towel handy to wipe off my palette knife because sometimes I may want to change something. I want to separate those shapes a little bit. All right, let's put in a stem. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be putting in highlights and lowlights and turning this into something. All right, let's establish a base. There we go. A little something to work with. Now I'm going to make a petal. Coming out of there. We'll have another coming this way. This one's going to be a little curled, so we'll just do this and have it coming in. This will be the petal in the foreground. Not so hard, right? It may be uh, beneficial to follow along with that uh, with a piece of paper and sketch it out. And that way you can get the idea of the shapes that you want, which would have been good advice for me to take myself. And I wouldn't have messed up the petal here. C'est la vie. And this feels a hair off balance. It just the splashes here. A little splash. Okay. Now we have an idea of what our shapes are gonna be. I'm gonna take this. I like this little flat knife. Most people don't paint with these, but I really like them for blending. So I'm just going to come in and just lay in some color. You can even blend with what's already there. I have a lot of white paint on here. More than I'd like, I believe. And it's okay if we go over the stem because we can put that back in, but it was just an idea to get your composition where you might like it. I'm gonna have to scrape some of this off. This is just too much.
Okay, and this, again, this is the lightest tone that I'm using, that I've mixed. All right, that's already looking like water. But I am not one to leave well enough alone. So I'm going to come in with my mid-tone, my the middle shade of blue, and I'm going to tighten up these edges. I just don't like what is happening here. So you see, you can just push the paint around and sometimes that can give you exactly what you need. I scraped off some of that white, so let me just put that back. Right, now let's do the same thing for the petals. All right, let's add a little bit of this deeper color in the splashes. Just little squiggles. Blending those colors together will give you a very watery effect. Avoid right angles. They don't often happen in water. Okay, now I'm gonna take this deeper tone and just put some shadows in a couple of places. Just kind of working it in. Not too much. You still want to have some of that color separation. but put a little bit where your petals bend. Your petals might not be shaped just like mine. So wherever you want the eye to believe that the petal is bent, add a little shadow. Now here, there's a lot of petals going on behind it. So I want this to be darker. If you imagine that this petal is going like this behind here. So this should all be darker. Okay. 
Okay, the base again is going to be a little deeper. And we have this petal here behind, so let's accentuate that. And just a little shadowing on the edges here. All right, let's do the same thing down here. Keeping in mind that the direction of your strokes are what tells the eye the shape of the object and what direction it's going. Still changing the shape of this thing, trying to get it where I want it. All right, we've got some of our mid tones. All right, now I'm gonna come in with some of these uh, very dark blues and lay down some of the deepest shadows. And this color does sink, so you might have to go back over it a couple of times, but that can also work to your benefit because if it goes down too heavy, it gives you a chance to straighten things out. Again, remembering to avoid sharp angles. You want things to be rounded. Nice thing is when you're painting water, uh, having a shaky hand is not the worst thing ever. It actually gives you a slightly organic effect. Too much coffee. These lines are looking a little too straight to me. Should be letting my coffee do the job. All right, a little bit of this deep color down in the splashes.
blending these together. Kind of keeping that oval shape. Okay. Actually, let me pop in a little more dark where the petals are laying behind. Remember, if you overdo it, you can come back in with white. If you get too much paint on there, you might have to wind up scraping some of it off. But as you have seen already, that is not impossible. Putting these shadows where I had the shadows previously, they've lightened up because they've been sinking. So just laying in a little bit more. The more shadows and more highlights, the more depth it will have. And as you saw, the when I first sketched it out, that would have sufficed. You know, you, you could have just said, hey, that looks like a flower to me made of water. And that would be okay too. I like to push the limits of things. I like to see how far I can take something. Sometimes that does not work to my benefit and I wind up ruining something beautiful. But I always learn something from it. And isn't that what we are all here doing? Need some white here. So I'll put a little white in a cup. I'm going to come in and lay down some highlights. This is what really gives it that transparent effect. So you will notice on water, there is a highlight and a shadow, typically, on the edges. And that is what is giving that very transparent effect. So just continuing to get those edges. And then same for the flower. Let's make that look a little more translucent. Dragging the colors into each other will give it the appearance of reflections.
Okay, I'm liking how this is looking. And so now, time to do what makes it really look like water. Let's add some splashes. So I just start with some dots and I give them swirls. I have a little skewer here I'm going to use to make some smaller dots. That's not much smaller. Just swirling them into, uh, that's just too many. Here's a neat little trick. If you don't like something, you can usually just pick it up with this little flat tool. Well, it's less obnoxious anyway. And just put in some swirls there and make it look like drips. And just do some splashes coming off of the leaves here I think a couple of places give it some motion All right, I'm actually going to put in the stem. I'm just kind of using a dabbing motion. I'm trying not to drag the paint too much. So as to not change the shape of the patterns in the leaf too much. All right, let me doctor up these splashes. The splashes aren't going to be perfectly round. They are going to be kind of oblong somewhat in the shape or in the direction that they are traveling. Okay, now I will take some white and add it to the center and blend that in and that will magically <laughs> make these look like water drops. My 
my white has been contaminated. Boo. You get some fresh white. Yeah, I'm still not loving this here. Like it never happened. You see, as I'm blending the white in, it really does just blend it into a bubble or a drop. All right, I think I just want to touch up a couple spots here just to give a little bit of definition. And just a little bit of lighter color. Ooh, what? For the stem, just to give that some depth. Some of the. It's got. Dragged a little out of the shape. On this petal. All right, I think I'm gonna call that done. I don't wanna mess around with it too much. So actually, let me just give that a little bit of wavy action just subtle Just do a couple swirls in here and 
give it a little bit of a churning feel. Flash action off of there. Lord, somebody tell me to walk away. Why do I keep doing this? Stop it, girl. Just, just one more. One more. I almost forgot to add in a little bit of stem. All right, I'm calling that done. I'm walking away. Walk away. Okay, here it is. Uh, I just stuck my finger in it accidentally in the only spot that is still wet. Uh, don't ask. Anyway, overall, I like it. I will have to fix that spot when it's dry. I will blend that in with those colors. Uh, let's see. I really like this petal came out very nice. One thing I did change, and I was demonstrating this on the first take of the wrap up, and that's how I stuck my finger in it, because I have no depth perception. Uh, right, I'm gonna go very far away from the, right there, that petal, I changed that, I made that a little darker. Uh, just behind there, I straightened that out. But otherwise, I do really like how this all came out. I like that petal right there. It looks really cool on the end. And there it is. If you made it through this whole thing, good for you. I hope you learned a lot. And you can absolutely do this. It takes a little time, a little practice. As you see, I have to fix things and go back and go back. But you can totally do this. If you think that you can or you think that you cannot, you are right. So think that you can because you can. Just do it. All right. So if you found this video helpful or these videos entertaining, at least, uh, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Uh, that helps me stay stocked up in supplies and bringing you the fresh content. And the Amazon store where if you enter through that link, anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I will receive a small commission of at no additional cost to you. Look at that. Oh, I tried to fix it. I have to wait till it's dry. Just shame on me. And uh, the uh, link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, that is where you can purchase my art and my music. And last but not least, our group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. Uh, also, my new CD, Better Than Chocolate, that's at my website. You can check that out. But in the meantime, 
you can just like and share and subscribe if you have not to show some love. Spread the love. All right, you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.